Hi, Bruno here. Welcome to Spain Guru. This is a first-hand experience of a Spain Guru community member who got approved at Houston's consulate for the Spanish no lucrative visa. Thank you very much, Julie, for sharing your experience. Now, let's go for it. Here's a timeline of our Spanish no lucrative visa process through the Houston Spanish consulate. They say that Houston's consulate is one of the most difficult consulates because they have special requirements that other consulates in the US or anywhere else have. Now, let's see. February 23rd, 2023. Overnighted the application to the consulate. March 14th. We receive an email asking for additional documents, new medical certificates, a health insurance document, and proof of retirement or not working. My husband has started drawing his pension in January, so he sent a statement. I got a letter from my former principal, I was a teacher, that I had resigned and no longer worked in the district. March 14, 2023 became the official application date. March 22nd, overnighted extra document received by the Houston consulate on March 23rd, the following day. On March 27th, four days after, received an email that our health insurance would not be accepted because excluded pre-existing conditions and given a deadline of April 3rd to rectify. March 30th, overnighted new insurance policy documents along with letter from our visa attorney. April 4th, email acknowledging that document was complete and that our application was in process. We were provided with a number to use in order to check the status online. April 12th, email from consulate that we have been approved and asking for our approximate date of arrival in Spain. April 14th, visas in hand via overnight return envelope. So for Houston consulate, don't cut it close with your medical certificates. Ours were issued on December 14th and we had to redo them because they opened the application on March 14th. Houston consulate does not seem to accept health insurance with exclusions. Although our insurance agent in Spain says he had had that kind of policy be accepted just fine from other consulates. Once they had everything, they asked for the process went much faster than we expected. It is such a great feeling to be on the other side of the ordeal and hopefully this timeline might be helpful to others using the Houston office. And of course, this post sparked some questions and some answers. First one, did you already have a rental apartment in Spain? For how long was the contract? And did you travel to Spain first to secure it or did it through a Spanish realtor online? And the answer was, we have an apartment, we secured it all online, although we had visited the rental agency in person on our last vacation to Girona in Catalonia. We stayed in one of their short-term vacation rentals and popped into the office to ask about longer-term properties. They also referred us to the visa attorney we used. Selection of the apartment and all the lease paperwork, etc., was done via email once we were back in the US. We have a one year lease. We expected to be moving last summer, but our initial application was denied. At the point we went to Spain and stayed, they allowed 90 days. Then in December, we came back to the States and reapplied. We had had an apartment since August of last year, but it's been unoccupied for all but three months. And you can read more about the rental agreement for the Spanish Negative Visa dealing with the Chicago and Houston's consulates requirement, which is very specific to those two consulates. You can become part of our Spain Guru community today by joining our Facebook groups. Our most important group is the Spain Immigration and Residency Questions group with over 17,000 members. We also have dedicated groups for Spanish non-lucrative visas with more than 2,300 members and for the Spanish Digital Nomad Visa with 2,000 members. And if you need expert professional advice, we've got you covered. Just head to spainguru.es and check out our top menu. You'll find immigration experts, relocation agencies, tax advisors for Spanish and US filings, sworn translators, apostille services, and health insurance providers for all types of Spanish visa applications and renewals. That includes non-lucrative visas, golden visas, student visas, and digital nomad visas, as well as medical certificates for visa applications and travel insurances. Finally, I highly recommend you, you join our weekly newsletter, which we send out every single Monday morning. You'll get tons of information, questions and answers, featured blog posts, and even news updates. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.